Yeah, you, you won't see the Federal Reserve System go anywhere, yeah. unless it changes its name. <laughs> That's all that will happen. It's not going anywhere. It's, uh, it's the only way the creditors have a security, is through the Federal Reserve. Okay, so 1929, they had already taken the state sovereignty. They had already taken the national government sovereignty. Whose sovereignty did they take in 1929? The people. And how, did, how was that demonstrated? Well, Social Security came around in 1933. Confiscation of all the gold and silver and all legal title. Up until 1933, you could hold legal title on your property. It was called a loyal title. If you used gold to purchase your property, the property was yours. You had control over the property. But now, because the people are in dishonor and the people are bankrupt, they no longer control their property. Now, all these, this history that we're going through, I'm not giving this to you to say it's bad or it's good. It's just what is. And it's, and it's actually good, <laughs> believe it or not. I know this infuriates a lot of people to hear that how things actually work, but I'm here to tell you that everything's been set up this way for your benefit. Okay? And when you understand how to be a creditor in that system, you'll see how powerful it is that our old system of law, being in the republic, being under common law, being under execution of law, is not a good place to be. It's much more destructive. Okay? Can you explain loyal title? A title is basically, remember we talked about how title was split into equitable title, legal title? A loyal title is one and the same. The legal and equitable are no different. It's one title. It gives you, it gives you sovereignty over the land. It's in the California State Constitution under mining title, as an example, because you can control what's underneath the land, what's above it, but it also means you don't come under codes, covenants. Uh, if you have one build a garage or an extension on your property, you've got to go through commissions and whatever else because they control your property. Right. And it was actually written into the California State Constitution because miners would work a piece of property, go into the bank and say, hey, Eureka, i got a bunch of gold, and then the creditors would come take the property away. So loyal title was written into the California State Constitution, but good luck filing a loyal title on your property because it's, just, it's almost impossible. Right. Okay. So it gives you total control and sovereignty, right, Brandon? Yes, it gives you control. That's basically a creditor controls. Plain and simple, if you control, you have legal title. Whether you've got a document or not, if you control the property, you have legal title, you are sovereign. The property is sovereign. Okay? Would, that, would having a little title on your property mean they couldn't charge you, say, property taxes? Or that you wouldn't be on the grid. If you took your grant deed, accepted it for value, and gave it back to the county, you'd be removed from the assessor's uh, parcel numbering system. <laughs> your property is no longer on the grid. There's no longer a property tax on that property. Now, I'm not saying anybody go and do that because you need to be responsible for the property. That means bonding for sewage, bonding the police department, the fire department, any benefits and privileges that your property receives you now become responsible for. You are paying the property tax because the state or the county took responsibility for those things. Okay? Is that like common law or what kind of law is that? It w is what? You know, when we receive benefits and everything like uh, it's, It is the current common law. But common law now is admiralty. Yeah, if you, when you talk about the years and what happens, can you talk about the law that, that everyone is subject to? You're not subject to anything except by volunteering and by agreement. Okay, when you lost your sovereignty and your ability to pay your bills, they actually gave you something in exchange. And all every time they take something, they have to give you something of greater, of equal or greater value. Otherwise, they're committing a crime. And what they gave you in 1933 was everyone over here in jurisdiction A now has an exemption. You're a creditor, okay? Now, from the perspective of jurisdiction B, you're a debtor, okay? Here, I'll do a little breakdown of the public trust and the private trust. Maybe blue will be easier to see, okay? That's not too good. 
Anyone familiar with uh, truss in here? Okay. For those of you who are not familiar with truss, let me give you this sweet and simple. Trust has basically four essential parts. A grantor, a trustee, a beneficiary, and res, which is the thing of the trust, okay? Or the property. Grantor, trustee, beneficiary, which are the three positions in a trust, and the res, or the property of the trust. Corpus is another word for it. Okay. So, we'll call this up here at the top, we'll call this the private trust. And we'll call this trust down here on the bottom, we'll call this the public trust. Okay. So in 1933, they took your title. Not only that, not only did they take title to your land and take away your ability to pay your debts with real money, but they also took title to something else, your body. Right. Okay? And that was done through a certificate of title known as a birth certificate. Okay? That birth certificate is the title to your body. Okay? Now you can take legal title of your body back. They were, they were only doing it to give you a benefit. Like you're basically, based on their perspective, you're a bunch of, uh, ir ir yeah, you're a bunch of irresponsible people. That's how they look at it. Yeah. So, so if you want to be irresponsible, we'll let you be irresponsible. But what we're going to do is we're going to put you as a, into this trust here so that we control your irrespon these irresponsible slaves on the plantation. Okay, so this is the grantor, this is the trustee, this is the beneficiary, and same down here, grantor, trustee, beneficiary. Okay, grantor of the private trust is... Living men and women, okay? The trustee of the private trust is a foreign situs trust that is created and evidenced by the birth certificate. Don't, I'll, we'll get into that in a minute, the, how the birth certificate works and how it works with titles and everything. So there's a foreign situs trust that was established with your birth certificate, okay? And when I mean for, when I say foreign, I mean foreign to jurisdiction B, foreign to the democracy. In order for them to create this government on top of a government, they had to first recognize the people over here and say, hey, you're the source of all the energy, you're the source of all the production, so we need to have a legal identity for you in jurisdiction A. Okay? Remember, jurisdiction A is the private or the republic. So that is a legal entity. Okay? And that legal entity we'll call, uh, a lot of people like to call it the straw man. We'll call it the foreign science trust. Well, there's two different straw men, so I don't want to call it a straw man. 